Hey, what's going on guys? It's time for another manga timeline video. And this time we're going to be talking about Takahiko Inoue's Slam Dunk. Or as it's pronounced in Japanese, Saramu Dunku. Uh, I'll just stick with Slam Dunk from now on. Now this is a sports themed manga series focusing on a basketball team from Shohoku High School. It was first serialized in Shonen Jump in Japan from 1990 to 1996. And has been adapted into an anime series by Toei Animation. Now, in case you're not aware, Slam Dunk had a massive following in the 90s, and it's the manga series that really kicked off Takahiko Inoue's career. As many of you know, he would later go on to write and illustrate Vagabond, which is by far one of my favorite manga series ever written. And if you guys want to learn more about Vagabond, I already produced a video about that on my channel, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Now, Slam Dunk features a boy named Hanamichi Sakuragi, who's a delinquent outcast and a leader of a gang. He's also brimming with physical ability, and it's this physical ability that allows him to join and thrive on the basketball team. Now, I know a lot of you are not that interested interested in basketball, but let me say this, this series not only teaches you how to play the game, but it provides great character psychology, an engaging story, and plenty of thrilling ups and downs. Plain and simple, it's just a freaking great, exciting story, and I'm glad that I get the chance to share it with you guys today. But before we start that story, if you're looking for some anime merch for the holiday season, I got a great offer for you, with a code in the description for 10% off. So go check out the anime website, subscribe if you haven't already, but if nothing else guys, I hope you watch the video and enjoy yourselves while doing so. Thanks for listening, and we'll get started right after the ad. Our story begins with a boy named Sakuragi. He just got rejected by another girl, which makes it a record for the school. He then meets a girl named Akagi Haruko, and it just so happens that she likes guys who play basketball. The two go to a basketball court as Haruko attempts to dribble a ball. She then implores him to perform a slam dunk. Unfortunately, he slams his head into the backboard, knocking himself out in the process. Later on, one of Haruko's friends attempts to warn him about Sakuragi, saying that he was in a gang in middle school. Haruko tells Sakuragi about Rukawa, a boy who could defeat three other players all by himself. In fact, she's a bit smitten by Rukawa. After hearing about this, Sakuragi becomes quite depressed. An upperclassman calls out Sakuragi. He then kicks a first year who was taking a nap. And it turns out that the boy he kicked was Rukawa. Sakuragi arrives at the school rooftop, finding Rukawa standing above the defeated bullies. Sakuragi becomes enraged at Rukawa, as Haruko comes in to stop him. Now, Haruko's antics annoy Rukawa, so Sakuragi punches him in the face. Rukawa then strikes back before leaving. Sakuragi-kun, you've gone too far! I hate you! says Haruko. And from that day onwards, Sakuragi and Rukawa would be known as mortal enemies. Later on, Sakuragi interrupts team basketball practice as he shoves a ball in the captain's face. The captain then challenges Sakuragi to a basketball duel. Sakuragi foolishly accepts. Sakuragi foolishly attempts to kick the ball like he's playing soccer. Now it turns out that the captain of the basketball team is Haruko's brother. In the midst of their game, Sakuragi accidentally pulls down his pants. In a flashback, Haruko attempts to convince her brother to let Sakuragi join the team. In the now, Sakuragi does his best to prevent Takanori from winning. Despite this development, Takanori will not allow him to score. Sakuragi chucks the ball at the hoop and attempts to go in for a slam dunk. Takanori snatches the ball in midair, but Sakuragi takes it right back. Sakuragi then goes in with reckless abandon and slams the ball home with a vicious dunk. Afterwards, Sakuragi discovers that Takanori is Haruko's brother. Later on, Sakuragi is thrilled to join the team, but Takanori says that that won't be happening. Sakuragi then gives Takanori with a box full of bananas to get in his good graces. He then cleans all the team balls and shines up the basketball court to show his level of commitment. And with this, Sakuragi is permitted to join the team. At his first practice, Sakuragi notices that Rukawa is on the team as well. The basketball team manager, Ayako, then introduces herself to all the new freshmen. Takanori informs them that the goal is to win the national championship, 
so they'll be practicing very hard. While the others engage in drills, Sakuragi gets started with the basics, i.e. dribbling a ball. Now Rukawa's skills are quite advanced, garnering him a lot of attention. Despite Sakuragi's quick progress, Takanori still doesn't want him practicing with the main squad. Sakuragi then becomes enraged, saying that he wants to slam dunk the ball. And due to this bubbling frustration, Sakuragi decides to leave the court. Huh, you lack concentration, moron, says Takanori. Later on, Takanori's words ring through Sakuragi's head. Haruko attempts to convince her brother to let Sakuragi rejoin the team. Sakuragi's friends get into a tussle with a rival gang. Sakuragi decides to leave the rest to them as he decides to go back to practice. Haruko is relieved that Sakuragi is back, as the redheaded boy agrees to work on his passing. Anzai Sensei, a rather rotund man, used to be the best basketball player in all of Japan, and he has organized a practice match with Ryonan High School, which, as it turns out, was one of the top teams from last year. A practice match is then held between the freshmen and the upperclassmen. Let's use all our strength, says Takanori. Rukawa comes up with an early steal, impressing Haruko. Haruko then tells Sakuragi about Karim Abdul-Jabbar, a freshman who defeated upperclassmen at UCLA. Rukawa then finds himself surrounded by several defenders. Nevertheless, he still creates an open shot for himself. Takanori comes in with a last second block, and creates a fast break dunk for himself. Ayako knows Rukawa well, and although he usually acts aloof, he will surely be motivated by Takanori's performance. Now, Sakuragi desperately wants someone to stop Rukawa, so that he won't impress Haruko. Haruko then wonders why Sakuragi doesn't like Rukawa. Takanori attempts a shot, but Rukawa displays his impressive leaps and blocks it. He then takes the lead in a fast break and slams the ball home. Afterwards, Haruko is quite impressed with Rukawa's skill, which annoys Sakuragi. Anzai is impressed with Sakuragi's vigor, so he allows him to join the game. Sakuragi comes up with a clean block and starts dribbling down the floor. In his excitement, Sakuragi goes for a dunk, but misses the rim and hits Takanori in the head. Later on, Rukawa's teacher gets angry when he catches him sleeping in class. Auta, captain of the judo team, claims that he'll become the world champion before Takanori. Now, Auta wants Sakuragi to join the judo team, which surprises Takanori. In fact, Auta sent three of his members to retrieve him, but Sakuragi easily defeated them. After watching Sakuragi take care of some PE teachers, Auta says that he was born for judo. He then attempts to convince Takanori to let him join the judo team instead of the basketball team. That's his choice, says Takanori. Auta changes into his gi and asks for Sakuragi to join the judo team. In fact, he'll offer him Haruko's grade school pictures if he joins the team. Now this devious tactic pisses off Takanori to no end. Despite Auta's offer, Sakuragi doesn't want to join the judo team. Instead, Sakuragi will take the photos by force. Auta then tosses Sakuragi onto the mat with a stunning move. Now Auta notes that Sakuragi felt like a wild animal, so he ended up forcing his throw. Sakuragi then headbutts Auta into the ground. He takes the photos, but before he gets too far, Auta implements a submission move to subdue him. The two then go back and forth for a while, until Sakuragi uses a shoulder throw on him. Now Auta wants him to join the judo team so that they can conquer the country, but Sakuragi makes it clear that he's a basketball player. At practice, the team gets ready for shooting drills. Rukawa provides a brief demonstration. Now, instead of laying the ball up, Sakuragi wants to dunk it. So, Takanori chucks a ball at his head. Now, Sakuragi struggles with layups, much to the amusement of the onlookers. In frustration, Sakuragi chucks a ball at Rukawa's leg. With his next attempt, he lays the ball off of the backboard and into his own face. He then puts aside his pride for a moment and asks for Rukawa to show him how to lay the ball up. Ah, my whole body slipped! says Sakuragi as he chucks a cart of balls at him. Later on, Haruko shows Sakuragi how to lay the ball up. Rukawa goes to the park to practice, but sees Sakuragi and Haruko already there. Sakuragi then heeds Haruko's advice, and finally puts the ball into the hoop. In class, he dreams about laying the ball up as he sees Takanori's face on Haruko's body. In practice, Takanori inspires his team to give it their all in their practice match with Ryonan. An unknown person walks into the gym as Sakuragi attempts to dunk the ball. Now the boy is named Aida, and he falsely believes that Sakuragi is Rukawa. This only aggravates Sakuragi as he attacks Aida. Aida then tells him about Ryonan's Oizumi. Now Takanori stopped him last year, so now he's hellbent on getting his revenge. Sakuragi then introduces himself, and says that he's the best player. Now for them to advance to nationals, they'll have to defeat Ryonan's ace, Sendo. 
The team then proceeds to improve upon their skills in practice. After practice, Takanori pulls Sakuragi aside because he wants to teach him about rebounding. A person who can control the rebound can control the whole game. And with that, it is now the day of the match. No matter what, I'll defeat Sendo. Upon arrival, Takanori introduces himself to the rival team's coach. Oizumi then tells Takanori that he will win today's match. And with this, Shohoku High School is ready for their first practice match. Anzai announces the starting lineup, and since Sakuragi didn't make it, he's absolutely furious. Now, to appease the irate boy, Anzai says that he's the secret weapon. The team enters the gym, as Sakuragi wonders which one of them is Sendo. Sendo ends up arriving late at the gym because he overslept. Sakuragi then tells Sendo that he's the secret weapon, as the two greet each other. Haruko arrives at the exhibition match as the tip-off begins. Sendo begins the game with an impressive assist. Oizumi displays his impressive skills by blocking three shots in a row. Sakuragi pleads with Anzai to go into the game. Rukawa then finds himself guarded by three defenders. They try to pass the ball to him, but Sendo comes up with the steal. He goes up to the hoop and passes the ball behind him for the assist. Now the coach for Ryonan wants to win by 30 points, as Sakuragi pokes him in the butt. Sendo continues dominating the game with his impressive steals and blocks. Ryonan creates another fast break situation. Sendo fakes a pass and goes strong to the hole for a vicious dunk. Because of this, Rukawa and Takanori's fighting spirits begin to rise up. Later on, Sendo goes in for an alley-oop, but Rukawa swoops in for the steal. Rukawa goes on a fast break of his own, showing off his amazing ball handling skills. Sendo meets him at the rim, but Rukawa dumps it off to Takanori for the easy slam. Takanori then urges his team to prevent Ryonan from scoring. The defense tightens up as Takanori comes down with a rebound. The team continues playing well on both ends of the court, as Rukawa has a sweet putback jam. The first half then comes to a close, with Ryonan being up by 8 points. Shohoku begins the second half with a 3-pointer from Rukawa. The coach for Ryonan then berates his players for not pulling ahead of the weak Shohoku team. Sakuragi spies on their meeting as he gets yelled at by one of the Ryonan players. Sakuragi is then tied down to a chair as he wonders how long they're going to sit him. Sendo scores with a jumper as he points over at Sakuragi and calls him out. Sendo, you've got guts. I'll defeat you. During the game, Sendo prevents Rukawa from getting the ball. Sakuragi is then told to warm up as he starts doing drills like a madman. Oizumi elbows Takanori, causing him to bleed from the head. And with Takanori hurt, he asks for Sakuragi to take his place. With Shohoku down by 8 points, Sakuragi checks into the game. He ends up getting the ball, but due to his nerves, ends up traveling with it. He then jumps into the air and lands on a Ryonan player, resulting in a foul. Rukawa then kicks him in the ass. How long will you be playing around? And this seems to be all the motivation that Sakuragi needs to calm down his nerves and get ready to play. Oizumi then hears that Takanori lost to Sakuragi, which makes him want to end the redhead. Just then, a Sakuragi knocks the ball away from Oizumi. He's unable to get the loose ball, so Ryonan retains possession. Oizumi gets the ball on the low block, but Sakuragi immediately puts up a creative defense. Got it, says Sakuragi, with ball in hand. On the other end of the court, Sakuragi tries to force up a shot, but Oizumi easily blocks it. Rukawa then gets triple teamed, so Sakuragi passes the ball to Kogura, and the mild-mannered player puts it in for an easy bucket. Sakuragi then passes it to Kogoro once more, as they cut the lead down to 3 points. Ryonan's coach thinks that Sakuragi is really smart, but it turns out that Sakuragi simply doesn't want to pass it to Rukawa. Now with 6 minutes left in the game, Sendo blows by Rukawa for an easy layup. Now Rukawa's got a cramp in his leg from guarding Sendo for 40 minutes, but he can still go on. Sakuragi and Rukawa then bicker at each other, as they head back into the fray. On their possession, Rukawa comes up with an offensive rebound, and the easy score. Sendo comes up with an offensive rebound of his own, as Ryonan goes up by 5. Now Shohoku is struggling getting the rebound. That is until Sakuragi leaps into the air and snatches it away from Oizumi. A Ryonan player grabs onto the ball, but Sakuragi tosses him away with his strength. Despite this, it's still a jump ball. Now Sakuragi doesn't see Haruko in the audience, as he gets boxed out by Oizumi. Oizumi continues to box out Sakuragi, as he gets a putback dunk to put them up by 7. Because Sakuragi still doesn't understand the basics, he gets embarrassed by Uzumi once more. And just when all hope seems to be lost, Takanori returns to the floor. Stupid, you call that a rebound. Now, Sakuragi becomes pleased to see Haruko once more. Takanori subs in for an exhausted Rukawa. Now, Anzai wants Rukawa to rest on the bench for one minute, and to play for the remaining two. 
Takanori scores an early basket to cut the lead down to four. Now, Sakuragi recalls his rebound training with Takanori as he remembers that he's got to use his body. Upon implementing this strategy, he beats out Oizumi for the rebound. Shohoku takes the lead down to one basket. Takanori comes up with a powerful block on the other end. Shohoku hits a three-pointer to finally take the lead in the game. Before they can sub in Rukawa, however, Sendo goes to the hole and dunks on Takanori. And this results in an and one, allowing Sendo to take a foul shot. And with the make, Ryonan is up by two points. Takanori wants to take Sendo on the next possession, yet Sakuragi doesn't want to yield. Sendo races between them as Sakuragi chases him down. Sendo then stops abruptly to take an easy jumper. Shohoku then cuts it down to two points again, but they have no answers for Sendo on defense. Sakuragi knocks the ball away from Sendo as Rukawa re-enters the game. And with this, there's only two minutes left in the game. Anzai then formulates a strategy that irritates both Sakuragi and Rukawa. Play resumes with Sendo receiving the ball. He's then immediately double teamed by Sakuragi and Rukawa. Sendo refuses to give up the ball as he starts to get really excited. He uses a distraction to blow past them and passes the ball to Oizumi for the easy basket. Sendo then provokes them on defense as the two first years have a fire in their belly. With one minute left and down by four, Shohoku desperately needs a stop. Sendo goes into the heart of the defense and rises up for a shot. Out of nowhere, Sakuragi then flies in with a block from the rear. He then comes up with the loose ball, but is quickly defended by Sendo. Sakuragi then gives it up to Rukawa as he drains the three-pointer to cut the lead down to one. Ryonan then uses their next possession to drain the clock down to only 15 seconds. Luckily, Takanori comes up with a clutch steal and quickly chucks it down to Rukawa for the fast break. Now Sendo won't allow Rukawa to get off a shot, so he's forced to pass the ball to Sakuragi. And with this, Sakuragi leaps into the air and gently lays it into the basket. Ha 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 ha! I'm a genius! Proclaims Sakuragi. Unfortunately for the quote-unquote genius, the game is not over yet. Sendo races up the floor with three seconds left. He then does a nifty move to lay the ball in for the winning shot. And with that, Ryunan takes the win in this exhibition game. Sakuragi is still in disbelief, thinking there's still time on the clock so that they can win the game. It's over. We lost, says Takanori. The team shake hands after the game. If you want to defeat me, then you'll have to practice really hard. At school the following day, Aota makes another attempt at enticing Sakuragi to join the judo team. Nevertheless, Sakuragi doesn't bite. Haruko decides to cheer up Sakuragi by complimenting him on his great shot at the end of the game. Sakuragi then proceeds to go shopping with Haruko. He then hears about Air Jordans from the shopkeeper as he heads to practice with his new shoes. Now the regional finals are near, with the state finals not too far off that. And there's going to be over 200 high school teams competing for the state. And within these teams is last year's winner, Kainan High, a team that has gone to the finals 10 consecutive years in a row. Anzai is pleased with yesterday's performance, and is certain that they will be rewarded greatly in the future. Takanori then asks Ayako if that quote-unquote guy will be back. We then meet a new character called Miyagi Ryota. Turns out that Miyagi just got out of the hospital for an unknown reason. Mitsui, who also just got out of the hospital, wants to destroy Miyagi. Ayo, who the heck is this kid? Says Miyagi. He then punches Sakuragi in the face. And he doesn't let up. He kicks Sakuragi in the face as well. Now it turns out that Miyagi was surrounded by numerous upperclassmen when he decided to attack the leader with a headbutt. And this is the reason that him and Mitsui ended up in the hospital. An enraged Sakuragi fights back by dropkicking Miyagi into Mitsui. Miyagi looks to retaliate as he elbows Mitsui in the face. Sakuragi then takes another student up and tosses him at Miyagi. That's when Ayako and Haruko yell at them to stop, which the two agree to right away. Miyagi returns to the team with Sakuragi following behind him. Mitsui, who is bleeding from the fight, is hell-bent on getting back at Miyagi. Meanwhile, Miyagi displays his adroit skills in a one-on-one -on -one game. Sakuragi steps forward and tells Miyagi that he's the future captain. The two go at each other, with Sakuragi using illegal moves to take Miyagi down. A fight breaks out between the two, with Takanori breaking it up. Nevertheless, the two pinch each other's faces as Ayako breaks up the scuffle. Later on, Miyagi tells Sakuragi that he got rejected by Ayako, and Miyagi joined the team to impress a girl. And in his case, it was for Ayako. And because they joined the team for similar reasons, they become brothers in arms. 
A group of motorcycle riders come to the school with evil intentions. Meanwhile, Miyagi teaches Sakuragi about a pump fake and how to trick your opponent. Yohei, as Sakuragi's best friend, decides to stop watching practice as he runs into Mitsui. The leader of the biker gang then attacks Yohei, as the gang makes its intentions clear that they're going to the basketball court. Now Takanori is in physics class, as the gang enters the court to exact a revenge on Miyagi. Hey, don't make my floor all dusty! Yells Sakuragi. Miyagi asks for them to leave, as Mitsui says that they're going to destroy the basketball court. Rukawa chucks the ball at Mitsui, but he dodges at the last second. Mitsui then kicks the ball to Miyagi's gut. He proceeds to headbutt him in the face and punch him as well. Now the basketball team can't fight back, because if they do, uh, they'd be banned from the competitions. Sakuragi and Rukawa step in to prevent further bloodshed. Rukawa instructs Mitsui to wipe the blood from the ball, but Mitsui simply spits on it. Yasuda from the basketball team begs for Mitsui to stop what he's doing. Mitsui, however, has no remorse for the kind-hearted Yasuda, as he easily slaps him down. Rukawa looks to avenge Yasuda, but one of the bullies whacks him in the head with a broom. After getting bloodied up, Rukawa retaliates with a swift punch to the gut. Rukawa unleashes full fury on the bullies, as Mitsui says that he'll lose everything. Rukawa cares not as he strikes him too. Ayako then steps in to prevent Rukawa from inflicting more harm. One of the bullies then slaps Ayako down, eliciting a reaction from Miyagi. Like a wild animal, he knocks down the bully with a ferocious kick. The motorcycle thug then steps in and easily knocks down Rukawa. Next. Things escalate further as Miyagi calls out Mitsui. The thug throws a punch at Miyagi, but Miyagi dodges and goes on the offensive. Mitsui has no intention of letting Miyagi win as he looks to blindside him. Sakuragi then grabs onto Mitsui's head from behind. Mitsui hits him with a broom, but Sakuragi quickly knocks him down. Sakuragi then says he's going to kill the biker thug. The thug takes the early advantage by throwing Sakuragi into a door. Sakuragi then equates the wounds to a mosquito bite saying they don't hurt at all. He then finds himself surrounded by five of the bullies. Just then, Sakuragi's four friends arrive to provide much needed assistance. They leap into action by swinging down on some school ropes. And with this, Sakuragi's army is ready for action. Teachers and students try to get into the gym as the battle begins. While his friends take care of the others, Sakuragi gets ready for round two against the biker thug. The thug lands a critical uppercut, yet Sakuragi still remains unfazed. While Yohei pummels Mitsui, he instructs him to never trouble the basketball team again. Sakuragi adapts to the thug's fighting style as he knocks him into the door. He then pummels him once for every person that he beat up in the gym. Now, Mitsui continues fighting, unwilling to yield to Sakuragi's army. Meanwhile, Sakuragi finishes off the thug with his overwhelming strength. Mitsui then slaps the glasses off of Kogura. Kogura then says, Isn't it about time you grow up, Mitsui? The remaining bullies attempt to run as Takanori blocks the door. Takanori locks the door from the inside and approaches the battered Mitsui. He then slaps Mitsui across the face. Now it turns out that Mitsui used to be on the basketball team. In a flashback, we see Mitsui playing for Takashi Middle School. Now in that specific game, he comes up with a late steal and hits the buzzer beater for the win. Now Takashi conquered the whole country and Mitsui won the MVP. When Mitsui entered Shohoku High School, he encountered a towering freshman that intimidated him. And it just so happened to be Takanori. Anzai divided the teams up and had them play a match together. Now Mitsui noticed that Takanori had bad dribbling, as he opened up the game with two easy steals. Mitsui continued to dominate as Takanori struggled. Despite the huge deficit, Takanori refused to give up. Takanori, i.e. Gorilla, responded with a huge slam. He then outworked Mitsui and got a clutch putback basket. Takanori then got his first successful block on Mitsui. Mitsui got the ball back and put up another shot, but Takanori sent that weak shit away. Mitsui persists on, but eventually wrecks his knee in the process. Now it turns out that Mitsui chose Shohoku over the dominant schools because Anzai was coaching there. And Anzai was the one that gave him the confidence to shoot the game winning shot. Now while Mitsui was relegated to the sidelines, Takanori continued to grow and get better. Mitsui, not wanting to stay stagnant, rushed back to the court and ended up re-injuring himself in the process. While Takanori flourished in the basketball tournament, Mitsui walked away from the game for good. In the now, Mitsui becomes enraged when one of his subordinates insinuates that he wants to return to the team. Kogoro wants Mitsui to rejoin the team, but Mitsui lashes out. The one who stayed in the past is you, says Miyagi to Mitsui. 
Just then, Anzai enters the gym as Mitsui breaks down. Yohei admits to what happened as he apologizes for fighting. In fact, they take the whole rap for the incident, along with Mitsui's gang so that the basketball team doesn't get in trouble. Shohoku then resumes practice with Takanori slamming the ball home. Mitsui receives the ball as we see that he's got a new haircut. And without missing a beat, he knocks down his first shot. Sakuragi concentrates his efforts on getting the boards. Haruko then comes in with some drinks as Rukawa flies in with a stunning dunk. Now the day of the Kanagawa tournament finally arrives, as Sakuragi meets up with Haruko while he's warming up. Sakuragi later joins his teammates as they go in with great expectations. And it turns out that their first opponent is going to be Miradai. The match between Shohoku and Miradai is ready to commence. Anzai sits Sakuragi and Rukawa because they were fighting. After Shohoku goes down early, Anzai sends in Sakuragi, Rukawa, Miyagi, and Mitsui. Shohoku gains some momentum with an early slam from Takanori. Sakuragi goes up for an early layup, but gets hacked across the face in the process. Sakuragi, who doesn't know what a foul shot is, goes to the line for two free throws. A 5 second violation is then called, so Sakuragi decides to chuck the ball at the hoop for the second shot. He goes up for the rebound, but Rukawa gets in there first for the thunderous slam. Now Shihoku's defense proves too much for Miradai. On a fast break, Miyagi drops the ball off to Rukawa for his second slam in a row. Maki, from Kainan High School, remarks that Rukawa is just like Sendo from last year. A freshman from Kainan, Kiyota Nobunaga, claims that he's better than Rukawa. Sakuragi gets frustrated that he hasn't scored a point, so he commits an offensive foul. Rukawa comes up with a block as Sakuragi heads on the fast break. Unfortunately for Sakuragi, he dunks the ball into the defender's head, and as a result, he gets thrown out of the game. Nevertheless, Shohoku wins the game 114-51. After advancing past the first round, Shohoku hits the court for their second game. To the surprise of the audience, Kainan is here to watch their match. Now, sometime later, Shohoku finds himself up 153 to 24. Oizumi approaches Hanagata from Shoyo. Hanagata claims that Shoyo would have put up 200 points against this weak team. Afterwards, Shohoku wins their third match by a score of 103 to 59, and they would go on to win their fourth match as well, with Sakuragi fouling out once again. Shohoku thusly advances to the quarterfinals. Sakuragi then goes to Takanori's house and asks him how to stay in the game without fouling out. Takanori implores Sakuragi to think his way out of the problem by using his past experience. Sakuragi then heads to the school gym, finding Rukawa practicing his various skills. Next game against Shoyo, I won't get disqualified. I'll get more points than you. You hear, Rukawa? Now it's the day of the quarterfinals match. And as Mitsui's in the bathroom taking a dump, he overhears a conversation with a couple of Shoyo players talking about him. In fact, they want to prevent him from scoring more than 5 points in the game. It is now time for the match. Shoyo has a big advantage since their team is fully comprised of seniors who are bigger and stronger than Shohoku. Ryunan confronts Kainan as Shohoku gets ready for their pivotal match. Now it turns out that Kenji is a player and a coach for Shoyo. The game is ready to begin as Shoyo towers over Shohoku. Now Takanori commits a jump ball violation at the start of the game. Hanagata gets the ball and performs a fadeaway jumper to prevent Takanori from blocking the ball. Now Shoyo's height is the highest in the division, and it's causing Shohoku a ton of problems. Sakuragi tries to concentrate on defense but performs a hitting foul. On the next possession, Hanagata fakes out Takanori and switches the jump hook. Now Shohoku struggles shooting the ball, but Rukawa comes up with a clutch steal. He then goes on a 2 on 1 fast break and performs an acrobatic layup. Takanori then comes up with a good block, but Shoyo ends up getting the rebound. Sakuragi then comes up with the next block as Shohoku gets on the fast break. Miyagi passes to Sakuragi, yet Sakuragi misses the finger roll layup. Luckily, Rukawa flies in for the easy tap-in. Miyagi comes up with a nifty steal as he gets the ball to Sakuragi, and with this, Sakuragi scores his first two points. Now Miyagi uses his small stature to pick the taller guy's pocket, and this gives Shohoku another offensive opportunity. Miyagi and Takanori perform a give and go, but the rim is tightly guarded. Miyagi then uses his small stature to dart beneath them so that he can get the easy two points. Shoyo's player coach gives them useful advice during a timeout, and tells Hanagata that it's up to him. On the next play, Shoyo stringently guards the center, but Mitsui shows off his range by draining a huge three-pointer. And with this, Fujima, the player coach, decides to go into the game. Despite this, Hanagata waves him off and starts to take control of the game. Shoyo then goes up 31-22 in a flash. 
Takanori deflects Hanagata's shot as Sakuragi comes up with the clutch rebound to close out the first half. Now Sakuragi struggles shooting the ball in the second half as Takanori comes up with the clutch jam. Sakuragi then dominates the boards, allowing Shohoku to pull with him one point. Sakuragi's burst of power surprises Hanagata as Anzai is pleased by what he sees. Rukawa finishes off the fast break with a dunk, allowing Shohoku to pull ahead. And with this, Fujima has seen enough as he decides to enter the game. Off in the distance, we see that Kainan High School is watching with great interest. Fujima starts off with a nice jumper to give Shoyo the advantage. Sakuragi comes up with another rebound, but the ball is quickly taken away by Fujima. Fujima pulls up for an easy look as Sakuragi crashes into him. Fujima drains the foul shot as he creates another great opportunity on their next possession. During a timeout, Anzai reminds the team that they're the strongest, giving them a boost in confidence. Now Fujima has made it to the finals four years in a row. Unfortunately, his opponent was always Maki from Kainan, meaning he has yet to taste victory. Ayako reminds Miyagi that Fujima is the best point guard in the division. So if Miyagi wins the battle, he'll be number one. Sakuragi performs his victory pose for Haruko, but when we gain a perspective on Haruko's vision, we see that she's actually looking over at Rukawa. Miyagi informs Sakuragi that his rebounding skills are the best in the province. Takanori gets triple teamed, so he passes the ball to Mitsui for the three. Unfortunately, the ball is swatted away. The defender then insinuates that Mitsui cannot defeat him. Mitsui puts up another shot that fails to go in. Luckily for him, Sakuragi, i.e. the rebound king, comes up with another clutch rebound. While protecting the ball, Sakuragi elbows Hanagata in the face. And with this foul, the momentum shifts towards Shoyo, as the score becomes 58-46 with only 5 minutes left in the game. Mitsui goes up for another shot, but gets fouled in the act. He then proceeds to make all three free throws, to cut the deficit to 9 points. Mitsui then bears down on defense, as Miyagi comes up with another steal. Mitsui takes a quick 3 to knock the lead down to 6. On the other end of the court, Miyagi blocks Fujima while taking a 3. He creates a fast break, and finds an open Mitsui for another 3 pointer. Now because Sakuragi was afraid of getting another foul, he started to play timid defense, allowing Shoyo to easily score. Mitsui proceeds to hit his 4th 3 pointer in a row. Sakuragi continues his timid defense, as Rukawa attempts to block the ball, but ends up fouling the shooter. Shoyo misses the two free throws as Rukawa goes to the other end for a masterful dunk. Now the game is finally tied with only 2 minutes and 30 seconds left. Rukawa then informs Sakuragi that he's not playing like his normal self. With the score at 60-60, Mitsui was taken out of the game with 20 points. Far above the 5 points that Shoyo wanted to keep him at. Sakuragi rages out and smashes his head into the floor, claiming that he won't lose to Rukawa. Sakuragi comes up with another clutch rebound, as Rukawa scores a contested layup to give his team the lead. On the next play, Sakuragi forces a turnover and leads the fast break. Now Shoyo wants to intentionally foul him since he can't make his free throws. But Sakuragi has no intentions of letting them follow him, as he goes up for the thunderous dunk. Unfortunately, the refs call offensive charging on Sakuragi. And with 1 minute and 50 seconds left, Sakuragi has to leave the game because of too many fouls. The crowd cheers on Sakuragi as he tells Ayako that he was too cocky. Riki Takato, Kainan's coach, claims that Fujima's era has already come to an end. The game comes to its conclusion as Shohoku advances to the finals. Thank you for the game, says Fujima with tears in his eyes. Later on, we see that Sakuragi is practicing his dunks. Haruko arrives, showing Sakuragi a newspaper with his picture inside. Later on, Aota encourages Sakuragi to join the judo team once more. Anzai then implores his team to get in the right mindset, as they'll be playing Kainan High School next. Now the finals is set up like a round robin, with every team playing each other, and the best team advancing to the nationals. Now as it turns out, Kainan has qualified for the nationals 16 years in a row. Now it turns out that Kainan's coach didn't investigate Shohoku. That's because they thought Shoyo was going to win the previous match. Since first grade, it has been Takanori's dream to defeat Kainan High School. We must win. The two teams then approach the center court for the start of the game. Now this year's Kainan is the strongest ever. Kyoto, Kainan's rookie, comes over to show off his amazing skills. Sakuragi doesn't back down, as they both tell Rukawa that they won't lose to him. Maki and Takanori respectively apologize for their disobedient freshmen. The tip-off takes place, as Shohoku ends up with the ball. Rukawa goes in for the dunk, but Maki is there with a block. 
Rukawa retains possession, but Jean intercepts the ball for Kainan. He passes to Kyoto, yet Sakuragi leaps in the air and snatches it from him. Unfortunately, he traveled with the ball. Takanori then goes up for a huge block as Shohoku goes on the fast break. Unfortunately, Maki's a beast on the boards, making it difficult for Shohoku to score. On the other end of the court, Sakuragi thinks he's got an easy block, but Kyoto goes in for a reverse jam. Meanwhile, we see that Ryonan is up 31-8 against their opponent. With Kainan up by 6 points, Takanori dunks the ball on Kyoto to score Shohoku's first points. Later on, Sakuragi leaps out of bounds to save a loose ball. And while doing so, he just so happens to land on Anzai in the process. Kainan's coach thinks to himself that Sakuragi's raw ability is higher than Maki's. Maki takes Sakuragi on the next possession, forcing a turnover. Ryoto wants Sakuragi next, but the redhead blows right by him for the easy two points. Kainan then replaces Jean with Yoshinori. And his assignment entails guarding Sakuragi, which seems kind of strange because he's very small in stature and he looks kind of weak. Sakuragi gets the ball, but he misses a shot against Yoshinori. And it turns out that Sakuragi always shows up for the strongest opponents, but when the opponents are weak, he tends to lose his focus. Takato, Kainan's head coach, has brilliantly subdued Sakuragi based on his own deficiencies. Sakuragi asks Takanori how to stop missing, as the senior has no answers for him. Yoshinori then drains a shot to the amazement of Shohoku. Takanori implores Sakuragi to slam dunk the ball. Sakuragi then goes up strong, but he gets hacked by Maki in the process, and Maki implores Yoshinori to follow Sakuragi anytime he gets the ball, especially when he's about to dunk it, that way he doesn't get an easy two points. Sakuragi misses the free throws as Kainan takes a commanding 15 point lead. Anze then takes Sakuragi out of the game as Kainan benches Yoshinori. Rukawa then goes after Kyoto, yet Rukawa stops on a dime and swishes the open jumper. Rukawa then misses a layup on the next possession, yet Takanori comes up with a huge offensive rebound. He gives the ball to Rukawa for the easy score. Unfortunately, while he did this, he stepped on someone's feet and hit the deck in the process. This play resulted in Takanori getting a swollen ankle, and because of this, he had no other choice but to leave the game. Now, Takanori wants his ankle wrapped up so he can return, but Aiko says that he needs to see a doctor. Sakuragi listens in from the outside as he heads back to the court. Anzai instructs Sakuragi and Rukawa to defend the center position in Takanori's absence. Things start off well with Sakuragi coming up with a steal. Kyoto blocks McGain on the fast break, yet Rukawa comes up with the ball to cut the lead down to 9. By working together, Rukawa and Sakuragi come up with a crucial block. Through a series of moves, Kyoto comes up with the ball and goes up for the dunk. Yet, much like Takanori, Sakuragi defends the rim for Shohoku. Sakuragi embraces Takanori's spirit by grabbing the tough boards. Aiko notices that Sakuragi referred to himself as Takanori's little brother. Rukawa takes a risky shot to cut the lead to 9 points. On the other end, Sakuragi misses his assignment, so Rukawa comes up with the block. Rukawa takes it upon himself to score another shot, but by doing so, he's making the offense stagnant and one-dimensional. Nevertheless, Rukawa continues hitting amazing shot after amazing shot, and after a three-pointer, the lead is down to two points. Ryonan and Shoyu are shocked that Shohoku is keeping the score so close against Kainan. On the next possession, Kainan uses a full court press to put pressure on Shohoku. Sakuragi barely gets the ball out as Rukawa goes up for the basket. He goes up against Maki, brings it down, and then brings it up again for the slam. With 5 seconds left in the half, Rukawa steals the ball and puts it up for the tie game. Now Takanori is cleared for the second half. As he high fives the exhausted Rukawa, Kyoto volunteers to defend Rukawa for the second half. Shohoku returns to the court with their leader pumping them up. Sakuragi slaps the ball on the opening jump as Rukawa goes up for the layup. Takanori comes up with the rebound and scores the bucket for the first lead of the game. As we quickly find out, Takanori is playing through significant pain. Takanori has spent years thinking about how he's going to take down Kainan, as we see him swat away a Kainan shot. Maki goes straight at Takanori, scoring a bucket and getting the free throw in the process. Maki continues proving his dominance by scoring on double teams. The defense collapses onto Maki on the next possession, but he dishes out the ball to Jean for the easy three. With this combination, they eventually take the lead of 73-63. Anzai calls for a timeout and says, Let's begin to decide the outcome of this game. Anzai wants to use four people to defend Maki and he has a special assignment for Sakuragi. The plan is put into place, as Kainan is completely befuddled. Maki passes to Jean, but Sakuragi immediately suffocates him. Jean breaks free, yet Sakuragi recovers and swats the ball down. 
Sakuragi runs the fast break, only to miss the layup. Takanori recovers the rebound and slams the ball home. Kainan misses their next shot, so Sakuragi runs the fast break once more. Maki performs an intentional foul to prevent him from scoring. Sakuragi then makes the first free throw by scoring an underhanded shot. Now it turns out professional basketball player Rick Barry did this in 78-79. Sakuragi sinks the second shot, as he plans on repaying Maki for what he did. Sakuragi comes up with a clutch rebound as Miyagi gets him within 4 points. Kyoto attempts a jam on the other end, but Takanori won't allow it. Kyoto clanks his two free throws, allowing Sakuragi to rebound the ball. Kainan steals the ball back, and Maki scores to put them up by 6. Unfortunately for Shohoku, they can't get the lead less than 4. Their endurance is really strong. However hard you try to pull away, they'll still catch up, says Maki. Mitsui takes an early 3, yet it bounces off the rim as the fight for the rebound begins. Sakuragi saves it at the last second as he goes flying into the bench. It finds its way to Rukawa as he goes up for the thunderous slam. Rukawa then checks out of the game due to exhaustion, as McGain takes his place. Maki misses his next shot, as Takanori comes up with the board. I must not make a single mistake, remarks Takanori. Akagi, defeat him! You have to defeat Maki, yells Oizumi from Ryonan. Mitsui loses concentration as the ball goes out of bounds. McGain saves it by throwing it off of Kyoto. Sakuragi then reminds Mitsui to show his true skills during their brief respite. The tough defense forces Mitsui to throw up an erratic shot. Sakuragi gets boxed out on the rebound, as Kainan comes up with the ball. Miyagi sneaks in to knock the ball loose, allowing Sakuragi to get the ball. Sakuragi finesses his way to the basket to dunk the ball on Maki. A foul is then called on Maki, allowing Sakuragi to take the and one. Sakuragi misses the free throw, allowing Takanori to come up with the ball. He dishes the ball to Mitsui for the three-pointer. The ball clanks off of the rim. Luckily though, the rebound king is there for the crucial board. Unfortunately though, he passes the ball to the wrong person as time expires. And with this, Kainan wins 90-88. to This isn't the end. This is the beginning of the determination of winning teams, says Takanori. At the next practice, Ayako reminds him that they'll be playing Takazato next. Now Takanori has a sprained ankle, so he'll be using a crutch to allow it to heal faster. Elsewhere, Haruko reminds Sakuragi that he shouldn't ditch school. She will wait for Sakuragi in the gym as she watches the team practice. Sakuragi skips practice, blaming himself for Shohoku's loss. Rukawa abrasively reminds Sakuragi that the loss wasn't his fault. The two beat each other up as Rukawa takes the blame for the loss. The next day, we see that Sakuragi has shaved his head. Everyone makes fun of Sakuragi's haircut, as Aoda entices him to join the judo team again. In practice, Anzai reminds Takanori not to overexert himself. A practice match is then held between the first years and the upperclassmen. Mitsui will act as the raft while Takanori sits the game out. Sakuragi impresses the onlookers with an impressive dunk. Now the practice match isn't much of a challenge for Sakuragi, so Anzai wants Mitsui to join the upperclassmen. Mitsui takes up the center spot, making it difficult for Sakuragi as he throws a turnover. The upperclassmen then take a 20-14 lead. Rukawa scores a bucket and cuts the lead to 4. Mitsui continues making life difficult for Sakuragi. They eventually go on a fast break, but due to Sakuragi and Rukawa's miscommunication, they both go up for the dunk at the same time, causing them to miss. Maybe one day those two guys will become the best partners in Japan, remarks Anzai. Afterwards, Takenori uses the three days before the next match to help out Sakuragi with his shooting form. Now the schedule is rigorous, but the forced repetition should improve his form. Practice continues on as it's finally time for the match against Takazato. The game is ready to begin, but Sakuragi is nowhere to be found. Rukawa gets a nice dunk as Sakuragi rushes his way over to the match. Shohoku finds himself up by 32 points as Sakuragi finally arrives. They decide to conceal Sakuragi's new skills from Ryonan as they win by 39 points. Kainan vs. Ryonan is set to begin, as a player from Ryonan performs an impressive dunk. The game is ready to start, as Fuku, Sendo, and Oizumi hit the center court. Sendo starts off with the ball, as he plans on playing point guard. He throws the ball up for Fuku to dunk, surprising everyone. Ryonan takes an early 16-8 lead, thanks to their excellent play. Maki makes a strong move, passing the ball to Kyoto. Kyoto goes up, but Sendo flies in with a block. The first half ends with Ryonan up by 10, and Fuku is playing great with 20 points of his own. With continued great play, Ryunan finds himself up by 15 points. Now Kyoto becomes angered, slamming the ball on Uzumi with authority. Rukawa, Mitsui, and Miyagi leave the game early, wondering how they'll deal with Sendo. After a brief run, Kainan cuts the deficit to 8 points. 
Maki continues impressing the audience with his swift and decisive moves. After a three from Jean, the lead is down to one. Oizumi receives his fourth foul, causing him to yell at the ref and receive an additional technical foul. With the free throws, Kainan finally takes the lead in the game. Sendo responds by regaining the lead with a nifty layup. Sendo starts a fast break, but Maki blocks it from the rear. The match goes back and forth, with Sendo playing evenly with Maki. Haruko then receives a phone call that Anzai Sensei has fallen ill. Fuku checks into the game as Ryonan is focused on taking down Kainan. Takanori receives word as he heads to the hospital to check in on Anzai. Sendo nabs the ball from Maki with only 5 seconds left, down by 2 points. Sendo slams the ball home with no time remaining. Now it turns out that Sendo tried to trap Maki into making a foul, but Maki didn't do so. Maki then realizes that Sendo is at the same level as he is. Now in overtime, Kainan ends up with the victory, with 89-83 to 83 points. And with this, Kainan advances to the Nationals with only one spot remaining. And that last spot will be determined with the last match against Shohoku and Ryonan. Now it turns out that Anzai passed out when he was watching Sakuragi practice his drills. As it just so happens, Sakuragi's dad collapsed in a similar fashion. But before Sakuragi could get some help, he ran into a group of bullies. The stage is now set for Shohoku to enter the Nationals, provided they beat Ryonan. Anzai seems to be doing a lot better, as the final match is about to begin. Kainan takes care of business as they advance to Nationals for the 17th year in a row. Shohoku looks to win in Anzai's absence, as Sakuragi is ready to take on Fuku. Shohoku High vs Ryonan High. Match start. Sakuragi blocks Fuku's first shot, but since it was goaltending, Ryonan gets the two points. Sakuragi redeems himself by showing off the jump shot that he's been practicing relentlessly. Sakuragi snatches the ball from Oizumi on the next possession. Unfortunately, he throws the ball right out of bounds because he put too much on it. Fuku draws an offensive charging foul, giving the ball back to Shohoku. Sakuragi looks to fake out Fuku, but gets the ball stolen from him. Luckily, Miyagi gets the chase down block. Oizumi then prevents them from scoring due to his stalwart defense. In turn, Takanori misses both free throws. Fuku then scores two points and even draws a penalty on Sakuragi. Takanori begins to realize that his physical condition is compromised due to his injury. Due to his indecisiveness, a 30 second violation is called on Shohoku. After missing a free throw, Oizumi gets another chance, but Sakuragi is there to prevent him from dunking it. After a putback by Sendo, Ryonan enjoys a lead of 9 points. On the bench, Takanori thinks about how this is his last chance. Sakuragi headbutts him to reinvigorate the fire in his belly. Takanori then looks to dunk on Oizumi, but Sendo comes up with the block from behind. Sakuragi has his chance, yet Oizumi recovers and blocks the ball. Sakuragi is then given some free throws and makes the first one. He misses a second, but Rukawa comes up with it and hands it off to Takanori for the dunk. Takanori then blocks Fuku's next shot, indicating that he's returned to full form. Fuku gets back on track again, putting Ryonan up by 19-12. Rukawa then tells Sakuragi that the Ryonan players look down upon him. Now, Ryonan's focus has been to attack Shohoku's weak point, that being Sakuragi. That's why Fuku is going at him relentlessly. Fuku screams, I have to win! He then receives an alley-oop from Sendo on the fast break, impressing everyone. I won already, Sakuragi. The bloodied Sakuragi is forced to take a moment off of the court. Haruko wants to check in on him, but Ayako waves her off. Because Sakuragi couldn't respond to Fuku, he admitted defeat. Shohoku goes on a bit of a run, cutting the deficit to 6 points with Mitsui's 3. In the locker room, Sakuragi kicks the locker in frustration. The second half kicks off with Shohoku winning the tip-off. Now it turns out that Rukawa gave up the first half to Sendo, as he plans on pouring everything into the second half. Rukawa hits Sendo with a new set of moves to score the easy bucket. Later on, Rukawa draws a foul on Sendo as he gets the and one. Sakuragi thinks that if he could stop Sendo, he'll be better than Rukawa, but it doesn't go according to plan. Sendo gets the ball to Izumi for the easy score. Rukawa answers with a quick shot on the other end. Now despite the difficulties, Sendo is having a lot of fun going back and forth with Rukawa. He then knocks down the tough jumper. Miyagi then comes up with the steal to cut the deficit to one point. Sendo responds with a basket, but is called for a shot clock violation, so it's no good. The two teams fail to score for the next three minutes, until Sendo attacks Takanori at the basket and gets the bucket. Rukawa takes a quick three on the other end, to tie the score up. The two teams continue trading blows until the score is 42-42. Mitsui picks up his third foul as Fuku drains the two free throws. 
Sakuragi throws up some erratic shots on the other end, but after each miss, he gets his own rebound. While trying to defend Sakuragi, Oizumi picks up his fourth foul, and if he were to happen to get his fifth foul, he would be ejected from the game, so he's forced to sit down for now. After the missed free throws, Sakuragi recovers his own rebound. He passes the ball to Mitsui for the huge three-pointer, giving Shohoku the lead. Takanori defends well on the other end, as Sakuragi puts him up by three points. In fact, Shohoku continues their excellent play, as Rukawa throws an alley-oop to Takanori. While fighting for a rebound, Sakuragi accidentally scores for Rianan, making the score 49-46 in Shohoku's favor. Takanori then extends the lead to 5, as he claims victory over Oizumi. Sakuragi then comes up with an extraordinary block, as Maki marvels at his raw ability. Shohoku then scores again, attaining a 7 point lead. Ryunan's coach plans on sending Oizumi back in with only 5 minutes left. If he sends him back any sooner, he risks getting that 5th foul. Takanori then performs a special fly swatter on Sendo, making a huge block in the process. Takanori winds the gap as Oizumi impatiently waits on the bench to be put back in the game. Sometime later, Sakuragi surprises everyone with a nifty move, extending the lead to 13 points with only 6 minutes left. With no other recourse, Ryonan's coach is forced to put Oizumi back into the game. Miyagi comes up with a quick steal and goes coast to coast for the devastating layup. Oizumi gets the ball as Takenori defends him. Oizumi then remembers all the times that Takenori outplayed him, as he becomes incredibly focused on taking down his foe. He passes the ball to Sendo, as Sendo passes it to Fuku for the basket. On the next possession, Takenori receives the ball down low. He aims to prove that he's the best center, but Uzumi comes up with a huge block. Chihoku misses their second opportunity, as Uzumi comes up with a crucial rebound. Go get those points back, Sendo! Thinks the coach for Ryonan. Sendo performs a give and go with Oizumi and gets the basket and one. Sendo then swipes the ball away from Rukawa and begins the fast break. He gets by Sakuragi and slams the ball home. Rukawa pushes it into the heart of the defense and scores on Sendo and Oizumi for the tough basket. Sendo then gets the switch on Miyagi. He drives to the basket and gets the bucket and one. Miyagi now has four fouls as Takanori, Sakuragi, and Mitsui all have three. Rukawa gets blocked by Sendo, recovers the ball, and blows right by him for the slam. And with this, Shohoku now has a 9 point lead, with only 3 minutes and 30 seconds left. Sendo responds with a bucket of his own. On the next possession, Shohoku fails to get a shot off, and gets called for a shot clock violation. Sendo then drains a 3 pointer to cut the lead to 4 points. Shohoku calls a timeout, as Ryunan's coach realizes that he's got them on the run. Sakuragi attempts to pass to Takanori, but it's a bit too high, giving Ryunan possession. Sendo goes up against Takanori, gets the foul, and makes the basket in the process. Takanori and Oizumi both have 4 fouls now, which means they're both gonna have to be very careful. Mitsui then collapses from dehydration, forcing him to exit the game. Sendo drains the free throw as Shohoku is only up by 1 point. Auta, from the judo team, then emerges from the crowd, urging Takanori to conquer the nation. Oizumi comes up with a block as Fuku goes on the attack. Sakuragi then meets him up at the rim to block the shot. The ball bounces to another Ryonan player who takes the shot, but Takanori is there for the block. Sendo then fakes out Rukawa, but Sakuragi is there to knock the ball out of his hands. The ref then calls for a jump ball. During the jump ball, Sakuragi jumps off the ground first, but he mistimed his jump, allowing Sendo to get it. The ball finds its way to Izumi, and knowing that Takanori has 4 fouls, Izumi attacks the basket. Surprisingly though, Sakuragi is there for the crucial block. Ryunan's coach then realizes that Sakuragi is their weakness. Sakuragi misses his next shot, but gets his own rebound in the process. Koshiro then steals the ball for Ryonan, but goes out of bounds in the process. Rukawa loses the ball, but Sakuragi steals it right back. Sakuragi then passes to Megane, who drains the open shot. And with this, Shohoku now leads by 4 points, with only 58 seconds left. Sendo works his way into the teeth of the defense, to score the tough 2 points. Takanori attempts to respond on the other end, but the ball bounces out. Luckily, the high-flying Sakuragi retrieves the ball and slams it with authority. Get back on D! Sendo's going to attack again! Yells Sakuragi. Luckily for Shohoku, there's no time remaining on the clock. And with a score of 70-66, to they're on their way to the national championships. Megane-kun, you're gonna have to postpone your retirement, says Sakuragi. Now, Takanori is overwhelmed with emotion, as Sakuragi puts his arm around him. Maki laments that he won't get to play against Sendo in the Nationals. Oizumi and Takanori then hug each other after the game as a sign of respect. 
Now as for the award ceremony, Maki wins the MVP for the tournament. Shohoku then heads over to the hospital to tell Anzai the great news. One week later, Maki invites Sakuragi to see Aichi's star player. We then see Anzai with Rukawa discussing some important matters. Maki and Sakuragi meet up with Moroboshi, Aichi's star, who's surprisingly laying on his back. Rukawa then tells Anzai that he wants to go to America. He wants to get stronger, but Anzai opposes the notion. Meanwhile, the freshman from Meiho High School, Hiroshi, dominates the game against Iwa High School. Now, Moroboshi returned in the second half for Iwa, but it was a little bit too little too late, as Meiho came up with the victory. Now, until Rukawa becomes number one in Japan, he can't go off to America. Now, Sakuragi decides to walk past Hiroshi after the game. He bumps his shoulder and gets knocked onto the ground utterly shocked by his level of strength. Oizumi, having turned 18 years old, says his farewells to the basketball team to become a chef. Hichimoto wants a chance at playing against Sendo in the Nationals, but he soon finds out that that won't be happening. Sometime later, we see that Kishimoto is getting schooled by Suchia. The 59 best teams for the Nationals are decided, with the tournament one month away. Turns out that Anzai had a player who wanted to go to America before. Upon staying for a year, Yazawa didn't improve upon his skills, much to the disappointment of Anzai. And as it turns out, Anzai would later find out that the students end up killing himself. Upon hearing the story, Rukawa asks Anzai to continue to teach him. Later on, Haruko arrives at basketball practice, as Rukawa and Megane collide into each other. Sakuragi then goes for a layup, but Rukawa blocks that weak shit. After Rukawa gets the ball, Haruko wonders if there's room for her in his life. Rukawa begins to dominate as Sakuragi gets frustrated that he's losing the game. Takanori believes that Rukawa will become the best player ever, as Sakuragi continues to fume. After practice, Rukawa challenges Mitsui to a one-on-one -on -one game. Takanori goes home to find a university basketball star and his coach sitting on his couch. The coach then invites Takanori to play with their team at Shintai University. Meanwhile, Rukawa impresses all the onlookers by beating up on Mitsui. Rukawa, do you want to challenge me? says Sakuragi. Rukawa denies him. Mitsui then drains a three for the win when Rukawa was distracted. Rukawa then says that his foot was on the line and it was in fact a two-pointer and not a three-pointer. Afterwards, Sakuragi continues to call out Rukawa and Rukawa has had enough of the harassment so he decides to take up the challenge. Now for Takanori to make it to Shintai, he needs to advance to the quarterfinals of the Nationals. Takanori clarifies that he's not aiming for the quarterfinals. He wants to become a national champion. After getting whipped by Rukawa, Sakuragi realizes the difference between his skill and Rukawa's. Later on, Sakuragi finds out if he fails four or more subjects, he can't participate in the nationals. And he just so happened to fail seven. In fact, everyone on the team except for Takanori received failing grades. The four then go through intensive studying to redeem themselves. Rukawa stays up all night studying with Haruko and then falls asleep. Haruko encourages Sakuragi to improve as much as he can, since conquering the Nationals is all up to him. After studying extensively, all four basketball players pass their exams, qualifying them for Nationals. The basketball team then heads off to Nationals, as Sakuragi stays behind with Anzai for some more practice. Anzai challenges Sakuragi to a game and says that if he can win, he'll send him to camp with the other players. Anzai makes 9 out of 10 baskets, meaning that Sakuragi has to make all 10 to win the game. And Sakuragi misses all 10 shots. Anzai tells him that he can only score when he's close to the basket. Thus, he's got to get better from the outside. And to do this, he's going to have to shoot 20,000 shots. Through some useful advice, Sakuragi corrects his shooting form and finally swishes the ball. Sakuragi dreams of going up against Hiroshi before he wakes up. The rigorous practice continues as Haruko cheers him on. Meanwhile, an exhibition game between Josai and Shohoku is currently underway. With moral determination, Shohoku would win the exhibition game by one point. And with each passing day, Sakuragi continues getting better and better. Sakuragi celebrates his 20th thousand shot. Just then, Takanori and the others return from their trip from Josai High. Now, Sakuragi ripped his shoes while training, so he's got to go shopping for another pair. The owner then gives him a pair of black and red shoes to wear for the Nationals, a pair that looks somewhat similar to Michael Jordan's. Takanori takes a look at the brackets and discovers that they'll be playing last year's champion, Sano, in the second round. That is, if they get to the second round. Sakuragi discovers that he'll only get to play Hiroshi if he makes it to the finals. Kishimoto from Toyotama shows them that they're only ranked as a C-class for the tournament. 
Sakuragi then proceeds to trip Kishimoto as the two become very fierce rivals. The opening ceremony for the Nationals is held. Kainan says that Shohoku has got it tough, being that they're in the same division as Sano and Aiwa. Shohoku doesn't back down, claiming they'll meet Kainan in the finals. Miyagi tells one of the Toyotama players that they'll be going home tomorrow. Takanori admits to Mitsui that he's nervous about tomorrow's game, as he goes for a jog. It is then the day of the match, and Toyotama's coach tells his players not to take Shohoku lightly. Now Anze wants his team to prove the rankings wrong. Shohoku, yeah! Sakuragi calls out Kishimoto during the warm-ups. The tip-off is ready to begin, as Kainan comes to watch. Shohoku wins the tip-off, but Toyotama comes up with the steal. They respond with a quick basket, leaving Shohoku shell-shocked. Miyagi attempts a pass, but is blocked by Kishimoto. Sakuragi then fights with Kishimoto, and receives a foul in the process. Toyotama goes up by 6 points, as Kishimoto calls for the ball. Toyotama then goes up by 9 points, as it turns out that speed is their specialty. Now in last year's nationals, Shoyo lost to Toyotama. Sakuragi angrily throws up a shot, missing everything as it falls out of bounds. Anze then takes him out of the game in exchange for Yasuda. Yasuda's main objective is to slow everything down. He then gets the ball to Takanori for the basket. Takanori comes up with a block as he gets the slam on the other end. The game then becomes 15-14 as Sakuragi becomes nervous that they caught up without him. Anze assures Sakuragi that he's the secret weapon as he continues to keep him out of the game. Sano's coach acknowledges that Takanori is a great center. Rukawa scores on a jump shot as Sakuragi finally realizes Rukawa's greatness. Rukawa nails another tough shot as Maki says that he's improved. Anze instructs Sakuragi to pay close attention to Rukawa and to learn from his play. In a flashback, we see Shoyo going up against Toyotama. Minami, known as the Ace Killer, took out the best player in the game. Back in the now, he does the same thing to Rukawa. I'll make you pay an eye for an eye, says Takanori to Minami. Rukawa falls unconscious, forcing him out of the game. Miyagi gets hacked hard and becomes furious. A ref gives both teams a warning, as the first half comes to an end, with Toyotama up by 6 points. Toyotama wants to resume their run and gun offense. Despite their objections from their coach, Rukawa then returns to the team with a visibly black eye. Anze wants Shohoku to beat Toyotama at their own game of run and gun. Kishimoto starts off the second half with the first bucket. Shohoku keeps up the fast pace as Miyagi labs it up for Sakuragi. He catches the ball and lands on the ground. Unfortunately, he's called for goaltending since the ball was still above the basket and he started to land. Toyotama continues scoring as they take a 10 point lead. Rukawa says that he'll become the best player in Japan, as he scores a tough shot. Rukawa then almost makes a circus shot, as he gets fouled in the act. Rukawa then closes both of his eyes, and makes the first free throw. Sakuragi gets the rebound, and attempts to shoot the ball, but he easily gets blocked in the process. Sakuragi gets another chance, and finally swishes the ball. Sakuragi slaps Anzai's hand, as he gets back on defense. Mitsui hits a nice 3 pointer to cut the lead to 7 points. The momentum continues as it's all tied up with only 5 minutes left to play. In a timeout, Kishimoto berates Minami for not being able to score in the second half. The coach punches Kishimoto and says that he hates them. Anze says that if they can control the rebound, then victory will be theirs. Minami misses another shot as Sakuragi comes up with the rebound. Rukawa attacks the rim with authority, giving Shohoku the lead. Now it turns out that Toyotama's coach was fired, and it was the coach that they loved very much and he would employ the run and gun offense. Ever since the new coach came on however, he wanted them to play more defense, which obviously they rejected. Minami goes at the rim hard. He then remembers his coach as he loses focus and falls on Rukawa. Now Minami performed this move to scare off Rukawa, but it failed to work. Sakuragi gets another rebound. He then performs a fake to give him an easy basket. And with this, Shohoku finds himself up by 10 points with only 2 minutes left in the game. Minami returns to the game as we see their former coach sitting in the stands. Minami begins with a quick 3 pointer. Takanori reminds Sakuragi that they can't be careless. Minami drains another 3 pointer to cut the lead to 4 points. Takanori and Sakuragi both block the shot as they fight for the ball. Luckily for them, time expires as Shohoku is victorious. And with this, Shohoku now has their eyes set on Sano, the strongest team in Japan. After the first day, 27 teams have been eliminated. Sano begins watching film on Shohoku to learn of all their strategies and weaknesses. 
Anze talks with Gie, Toyotama's previous coach. Now, Gie remarks that Shohoku's players are quite strong. Sano then prepares to practice against this year's University All-Star team. Shohoku then watches tape from last year of Kainan playing Sano. While watching, Miyagi wonders if he can keep up with their point guard. Number 13, Sawakita, is their ace player, and he was a freshman just last year. Last year's tape ends with Sano winning by 30 points. Now, to beat Sano, they'll have to have unyielding determination. Haruko then calls Sakuragi to encourage him before the big game. Minami meets up with Rukawa and offers him some medicine for his wounds. He then informs Rukawa that Sawakita is the number one basketball player. Sakuragi, who's listening into the conversation, still wants to beat Rukawa. Megain reminds Takanori and Mitsui that they're all still here since they are the three that believe that they can conquer the nation. In the practice match, Sano's current players completely dominate their former players. With Fukatsu as their captain, Sano has not lost a single game. While watching the tape, Sawakita implores his teammates to lure Takanori away from the basket. Masashi will handle Rukawa during the match. After watching Sakuragi, Sano doesn't know what to make of him. Now it's the day of the second round, and Kainan is taking care of business as usual. Meanwhile, Hiroshi puts on an impressive performance for Meiho. Sano gets ready for the warm-ups, as the crowd is flooded with their fans. Sakuragi performs a reverse dunk during layups. He then aims to impress everyone by jumping from the free throw line. Unfortunately, he comes up a bit short. Kainan then wins their match, as Meiho cruises the victory, with Hiroshi leading the charge. Mitsui will be playing up against a defensive specialist. Anze says that the reason that they're doing this is that they're most worried about him, and he's doing this to boost up Mitsui's confidence. Anze is then impressed that Takanori has no fear in facing up against Sano. Shohoku arrives at the court as they embrace their role as the bad guys. Sakuragi nails an impressive dunk, impressing the Sano players. I was just giving them a hello, says Sakuragi. Sawakita attempts to respond, but ends up missing. All the top teams have come here to watch Sano. Shohoku wins the opening tip, as Miyagi recalls what Anzai said, that they need to take charge of the game. Miyagi gets his pocket picked, as Sano goes on the fast break. Miyagi gets the ball back, as he lobs it up for Sakuragi. Sakuragi outleaps his opponent, and slams the ball with authority. Fukatsu responds on the other end, tying the game up. Mitsui drains a three, as it's Anzai's plan for him to have a big first half. Mitsui drains another shot, as he seems to have found his rhythm. Sano doesn't miss a beat, however, scoring easily on the other end. Mitsui takes another shot, and drains another three-pointer. Mitsui then gets closely guarded, as he begins to drive to the basket. He dishes the ball to Takanori for the thunderous slam. Anzai gets Mitsui's attention, and tells him a job well done. Masashi shoots from outside the paint, and cuts the lead to three points. Miyagi attacks the basket, but it's swatted away by number 9. It then bounces off of Sakuragi's face and goes in, making it 15 to 10. It was just as I planned. My ultimate face shot worked perfectly. Sawakita blows by Rukawa to score the easy layup. Rukawa is then eager to challenge Japan's number 1 as he makes his move. He then dunks the ball on Masashi. If Sano's Japan's number 1 team, then I will destroy them. Hiroshi comes to watch the game as he's surprised that Sano is losing. Sawakita follows Rukawa on a fast break, as he's then taken out of the game. Sano sends in Masashi's brother. Now Mikio's girth is too much for Sakuragi, as the rotund man scores easily. Sakuragi attempts to get position on Mikio by shoving him down. Unfortunately, by shoving him down, he ends up with a foul. In a timeout, Sano's coach never considered the possibility that they could be losing this game. Now Anzai is going to change up the strategy by focusing the offense on Sakuragi. Mikio continues to dominate Sakuragi with his size and strength. Sakuragi gets the ball and attempts to challenge Mikio's power, but he gets called for traveling in the process. Mikio misses the next shot, yet Masashi is there for the putback dunk. While defending Mikio, Sakuragi understands that he can only shoot from underneath the basket. Therefore, Sakuragi will not let him get under the basket. Mikio is then called for a 3 second violation, giving Shohoku the ball. On the next possession, Sakuragi easily sidesteps Mikio for the jumper. Now since Mikio can't get to his spot, he lashes out in frustration, receiving an offensive foul in the process. Sakuragi then blows by Mikio to score the easy basket. The match would eventually go into halftime, with Shohoku up by 2 points. Now despite their success in the first half, Anze tells them to forget about it. Draw out all your skill, strength, and stamina. Bring it all out and lay it on this court, says Anzai. Sano gets the ball to start off the second half. Sawakita creates separation and drains the three-pointer, giving Sano the lead. 
Now, Sano wants to settle this match right here and right now in the next three minutes with suffocating defense. Sawakita gets the steal and puts Sano up by three points. The full court press causes Miyagi to commit an offensive foul. And before you know it, Sano takes a 10 point lead. Now, Sano's coach plans on getting a 20 point lead within the next three minute stretch. Sano steals the ball again and goes up by 12. Sano gets the basket and one, completely devastating Shohoku. Sano's coach instructs his team to go for the kill. As they come out of the timeout, super motivated. Anzai devises a scheme to parry the full court defense. To boost his confidence, Ayako writes number one point guard on Miyagi's hand. Thanks to Anzai's scheme, Miyagi blows by the defenders and throws a behind the back pass to Rukawa. Rukawa misses the shot, but Sakuragi comes up with it. His shot is then blocked as Takanori retains possession. Takanori fights his way inside, yet can't make the basket. Masashi then outmaneuvers Takanori to dunk the ball on Sakuragi. Takanori then spins inside, but the shot is still blocked by Masashi. On the other end, Masashi gets his own rebound and extends the lead to 20 points. Hiroshi gets ready to leave, as all the other top schools think the same thing. Now Sakuragi wants to take care of things himself, but commits a double dribble in the process. What the heck is going on with them? Says a man in the audience, as Masashi scores again. Rukawa struggles to find any daylight against Sawakita. The ball gets back to Takanori, as he's called for traveling. Shohoku takes a timeout, as everyone is absolutely exhausted. Anzai subs out Sakuragi for McGain, as he expresses his belief that they can still win this game. Rukawa begins with a quick shot, which is rather impressive, but he still comes up short. Sano goes on the fast break as they get the thunderous slam to go up by 24 points. Anzai begins to teach Sakuragi about how they can get back in this game. For example, if Sakuragi gets the rebound and prevents the fast break for Sano and scores himself, that would be a 4 point swing. If you can do this, then you will be our comeback victory warrior. And with this, Sakuragi makes his return to the court. Sano's coach wonders why Sakuragi is being sent back into the game. Sakuragi then proceeds to poke Takanori in the butt. He then jumps on the announcer's table and says that Sano will be defeated. Takanori punches him in the ass and calls him an idiot. Play resumes, but Nobia's confident that Sakuragi will not begin the rebounds. Sakuragi tugs on his shirt a bit, allowing him to get the rebounds. He then puts the ball up and in to end Shohoku's scoreless streak. Miyagi then comes up with a steal on the other end. He takes a shot that misses, yet Sakuragi gets the ball and tips it in. Sakuragi, you still haven't shown your true ability, remarks Anzai. Takanori gets frustrated on the next possession, throwing up an erratic shot. Sakuragi then outleaps his opponent to snatch another crucial rebound. He passes to a nervous Takanori, who commits an offensive foul. Takanori's dad steps onto the court to encourage his son. And with this, Takanori's confidence comes back to him as he says that Shohoku is not going to lose. Sakuragi and Takanori work together to block the next shot. Takanori then sets a nice screen for Mitsui, allowing him to hit the clutch three. Now as freshmen, Takanori and Mitsui never got along, but in the here and now, they're working in perfect harmony. Fukatsu responds with a three on the other end, extending the lead to 20. Now Mitsui is running on fumes, but he still hits another three. On the next possession, Mitsui misses his next three, but Sakuragi fights through the two defenders to get a clutch board. Mitsui gets another chance, cutting the lead down to 14 points. Shohoku steals the ball as Miyagi goes on the fast break. Now Fukatsu commits an intentional foul, which means that Shohoku will get two free throws and possession of the ball. Kainan's coach says that if Sano's coach can't figure out Sakuragi, he might very well lose. Now Takanori realizes that Shohoku could not be without Sakuragi. There's no way they would have a chance of winning without him. After two free throws and Takanori's slam, the lead is down to 10 points. Masashi is then placed on Sakuragi, as Mikio is put on Takanori. Because Sano is using Masashi to guard Sakuragi, they must realize how dangerous he is. Masashi wins the first battle, surprising Sakuragi. Sawakita attempts an alley-oop to Masashi, yet Sakuragi is there to block the ball. Sawakita then provokes Rukawa, as the latter says that he'll defeat him. Sakuragi defends Masashi well as he sprints on the other end for a fast break. And this kind of leg power is very impressive, something that doesn't go unnoticed by Masashi. And upon seeing this, Anzai realizes that Sakuragi is a prodigy. Sakuragi misses the layup, but Rukawa is there for the putback slam, making Anzai realize that he in fact has two prodigies. Sawakita wants the ball in the next play. Sakuragi comes up with the steal as Rukawa starts the fast break. 
Rukawa goes up for the dunk, but Sawakita is there to chase him down. He then works his way past the defense and floats one in for two points. Rukawa finds himself trapped on offense. He passes the ball out, but it's stolen by Fukatsu. While watching, Moroboshi of Iwa admits that he doesn't have what it takes to beat Sawakita. Sawakita floats another shot in on Sakuragi to extend the lead to 12 points. And it's at this moment that Sawakita tells Rukawa that he's going to America after the summer ends. Sawakita swipes the ball from Rukawa as he begins the fast break. He then jams the ball with authority, claiming that he's the number one player in Japan. Now Sawakita's father instilled a love of basketball in him at a very young age. In the now, Sawakita blocks Rukawa, claiming that Rukawa cannot beat him one-on-one. -on -one. It's not over yet, responds Rukawa. Rukawa misses the shot, as Masashi outmaneuvers Sakuragi for the rebound. Kyoto yells at Rukawa to not give up, since they are one of the two teams representing Kanagawa. Sawakita gets around the three defenders to score on the reverse layup. Now Sawakita is playing with great energy, and that's because he's never had a challenge like this before in his life. Sawakita steals the ball once again. Rukawa follows him as Sawakita still makes the shot. In a flashback, Sendo told Rukawa that he met someone in middle school, someone that he couldn't beat. And this seems to be in reference to Sawakita. Now despite being down by 18 points with 5 minutes left, Rukawa's will to win does not evaporate. Today, I will defeat you here, and then go to America. In a flashback, Sendo says that no one can beat Rukawa one-on-one. -on -one. But during a real game, he's not using his full potential. Rukawa then drives in and throws it behind his back to Takanori. Takanori gets the basket and is followed in the process. Anzai pumps his fist in excitement. Sakuragi then gets the rebound from the foul shot and passes to Miyagi. The team continues passing the ball until Takanori gets the easy two points. Now that Sawakita thinks that Rukawa will pass the ball, Rukawa instead goes on the attack. Now Sakuragi finds himself in the wrong spot at the wrong time as Rukawa runs into him. Now Rukawa says that Sakuragi is just a newbie and this lights a massive fire within Sakuragi's gut. Sawakita then runs into Sakuragi, drawing an offensive foul. Rukawa then directs the offense, leading to an easy bucket for Takanori. On the next play, Rukawa steals the ball from Sawakita. Two Sano players block the rim, so he passes the ball back to Mitsui. Mitsui drains the shot to cut the lead down to 10 points. Kyoto then realizes that Sakuragi and Rukawa are beginning to change. Sawakita misses the next shot, as the ball is given to Shohoku. Rukawa then drives past Sawakita and throws up a floater that goes in. Sawakita decides to go one-on-one -on -one once again to prove his dominance over Rukawa. Sakuragi attempts to defend the rim, as we learn that Sawakita never passes the ball since he's never lost, which seems to be a big weakness on his part. Just then, Takanori leaves his assignment to shut down Sawakita, and he was able to do this because he knew Sawakita was not going to pass the ball. Sakuragi reminds Takanori that they still have a chance, as Takanori agrees with him. Fukatsu then knocks the ball away from Miyagi. Now to save the ball, Sakuragi dives into the stands. He looks to be out of it, but after Rukawa antagonizes him, he jumps back into action. Shohoku then notices that the crowd has started to support them. Takanori takes a shot, but it bounces off the rim. Sakuragi knocks it over to Rukawa, as he notices that his spine is starting to hurt. If you don't want to be subbed, then follow me with your life, says Rukawa. Rukawa then nails a three-pointer to cut the lead down to five points. Now despite their huge comeback, Shohoku still hasn't achieved anything yet. Ayako then begins to worry about Sakuragi's injury, stating that it could threaten his life. Does that mean that I won't be able to play basketball again? Remarks Sakuragi. Sakuragi claims that he's immortal, as he laughs it off. Anze reminds him of their individual strengths that make Shohoku strong. We must win. Fukatsu dishes the ball to Masashi for the slam. Sano attempts to trap Miyagi with their suffocating defense. Despite this, Miyagi splits the double team. Sakuragi's back continues to hurt, leaving him depleted of strength. Takanori attacks the rim with authority. He misses the shot, but Sakuragi is there for the putback dunk. Sakuragi-kun! exclaims Haruko. Unfortunately, Sakuragi is in extreme pain. Now it turns out that the shot was after the whistle, so Shohoku will shoot two free throws instead. Just then, Sakuragi collapses from exhaustion. Sakuragi then wonders if he'll be able to play basketball ever again. These four months, it's just like having a dream, remarks Sakuragi. Sakuragi gets up and tells Haruko that he loves playing basketball. Takanori then makes both of his free throws. Sakuragi, while in extreme pain, asks to be subbed back into the game. Anze wants to cancel the sub since Sakuragi is in massive pain. Yet Sakuragi reminds him that the time is now. And with this, Sakuragi re-enters the game to the surprise of everyone. His pain is quite significant, but he still wants to win the game. 
Mikio gets the ball down low, going straight for the slam. But Sakuragi musters up all his strength to send that weak shit back home. Mitsui then strokes a perfect three as he gets fouled in the process. Shohoku erupts in cheers as the lead is down to two points. Sano attempts to calm themselves down as the game hangs in the balance. Mitsui sinks the free throw to cut the lead down to one. Now in a strange turn of events, even Kainan finds himself rooting for Shohoku. Masashi goes up as Takanori gets a hand on it. Sakuragi gets the ball, but Sawakita steals it away from him. Sawakita goes up for the jam, but Sakuragi will not allow the game to end here. Rukawa comes up with a loose ball and goes racing down the court. He looks to jam it home, but Masashi is there for the devastating block. Sakuragi dives to save the ball. He also manages to toss it back to Rukawa in the process, giving him a second chance opportunity. Rukawa scores the basket, putting Shohoku up by one point. The stunned crowd begins to erupt in cheers. Sano now has 20 seconds to respond with a basket of their own. Now Anze wants to sub him again, presumably for Sakuragi. With this in mind, Sano's coach holds off on calling a timeout. Sawakita springs free as Fukatsu passes the ball to him. Sawakita rises up and floats one in with 10 seconds left, putting Sano up by one point. Sakuragi then begins sprinting to the other side of the court, surprising Sano. Takanori passes to Rukawa as only 4 seconds on the clock remain. Rukawa races down and lifts up for the shot with two defenders in his face. But at the last second, he decides to dish the ball to Sakuragi. And with no defenders on the redhead, he decides to lift up for the wide open jumper. The ball leaves his fingertips and goes through the hoop, nothing but net. And with this, Sakuragi and Rukawa celebrate their accomplishment, as Shohoku cheers on their victory. And with no time left on the clock, the final score is Shohoku 79, Sano 78. Yeah, we must get even better. Sometimes losing may even become a great fortune later, says Sano's coach. Now while this was a fantastic achievement by Shohoku, they had nothing in the tank for their next game. And they got completely blown out by Iwa. Sometime after the tournament, Miyagi informs the basketball team that he's the new captain. Haruko joins the basketball team as well, as the new co-manager alongside Ayako. Now to get to nationals again, they'll have to work hard, and win the prefecture tournament. Now Rukawa is taking part in an All Japan Junior Camp, while Sakuragi goes to rehabilitation. Meanwhile in practice, Miyagi scores on Mitsui, claiming that it is now his era. And while this is going on, we see that Takanori and Megane are watching the practice. Try hard, Sakuragi-kun. Once you finish with this rehabilitation, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting for the basketball I love so much. It's all because I'm the Tensai. And with this, guys, it officially ends Takahiko Inoue's slam dunk. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you on the flip side.